In this video, we are going to extract information from unstructured data, clean and linked data. Observe that the executive names in the data frame we created can be appended onto the HTTP address for Wikipedia to obtain the web pages of CEOs. This is where additional information such as date birth may be found. We will therefore extract the names of the CEOs using projection, which essentially subsets the data by column. Projection is written like this. And it yields a list of strings of executive names. So let's take a look at the web page of one CEO. Notice that the date of birth is in a special area of the web page over here. Looking at the underlying HTML of the web page, we can see that the born information that we want to pull is embedded in the vCard table shown at the top. We will do this using a language called XPath. And to understand XPath, it is useful to think of the HTML structuring as a tree. So this is the tree corresponding to the HTML on the previous page. Note that the content that we want is in the table for which vCard is one of the classes. The dots shows that there are other classes in the string associated with that class and that the B day is in the body of the table. The path to the table is what we're interested in is shown in red. XPath has several navigation axes. For example, um, child is like this. Descendant is like this. Parent is one dot. Ancestors is two dot. So these can all be combined in expressions. And conditions can also be specified to, to restrict matching elements. For example, contains a class vCard. This only returns tables of that class. And over here, text brackets extracts the text at the leaf of the tree. So now we have the data frame of the name of the CEO and the corresponding web page. Recall that the born value is ex extracted using the XPath expression described earlier. We convert it to the date, date, time, date time like this. So if there is no B day, then it will be null. You will have to be careful of how you handle these null values during analysis. Sometimes you will throw the roll away. Sometimes you will calculate some values, for example, average, but this is not always a good idea. Now we want to take this data and check how clean and complete it is, and then put all the data together. So we are moving from obtaining the data to some basic operations over data frames and SQL, projecting and selecting. In the next part, we will show the these bulk operations using both data frames and SQL. So we want to link between these two tables, but the names in the exact underscore DF data frame have underscores. So we need to clean the data to get rid of the underscores. So we are cleaning the names by replacing underscore with a space and in doing so using projection and apply. So note that the pandas that differentiates between data frames and series, which is a single column and multi row. The operations you can do over a data frame and series differ. 
So this returns a single column as a series and replacing the single square bracket with the double square bracket will return a data frame. In this example, we are operating over a series and applying a function over each element. And lambda x over here indicates a function that is used just for this operation. So the SQL version of the same thing is over here. We're putting exact underscore df in a table called temp underscore exact, and then using SQL to clue. Note that projection in SQL is done by specifying the columns to be projected over in the select class. Replace is a function that is taking the name as an argument and performing a replacement of underscore by space. The result attribute is specified as clean underscore name. So let's talk about another bulk operation that is commonly often used in data frames in SQL, selection based on predicate. The way Panda does it is um, not very intuitive. Let's warm up by doing a projection yielding a series. So if we want only one person, say Kumar Verla, we apply a predicate to the series, sort of like apply earlier. This gives a true value for each of the elements of the series, a Boolean series. So we can now extract rows of interest using these Boolean values to extract only those rows which are true. So this gives us a data frame, including only those rows satisfying the condition. Here it results the rows with clean underscore name equals Kuma Berla. We can also select in SQL using the condition clean underscore name equals Kuma Berla in the where clause. So now we have the basic set of operations over single date, uh, single tables. We're cleaning the data. Now we still have to have the task of linking the two data frames together. To do this, we use the bulk operation merge. For our example, to fit on a slide, we will project both tables on the necessary columns. So the right-hand side creates a data frame with only the columns listed and same for this exact underscore data frame. This shows the difference in the projection yielding a series shown earlier versus one yielding the data frame. And notice now we use a double bracket. We will merge the two projected data frames under the condition that the executive column value in table on the left matches the one on the right. Well, we can, we can also do this in SQL by selecting the result columns we want in the result, the relations to be joined in the from clause, and using join on over here to specify that this is a join. So looking at the result, are we missing anything? So if there are millions of rows and we only lose four, maybe we don't care. But perhaps the four missing ones are outliers in an important way. For example, maybe the wealthiest or the youngest and my skew our results if they are dropped. So maybe we should uh, want to clean more.
So let's do a version of the merge, which gives us more information about what is missing. So we use outer join. Outer join will indicate partial rows when one side doesn't have a match on the other side. Here we're using the left outer join, which includes all the tuples in the left data frame, even though even those who don't have a match in exact underscore df. Those who don't have a match are padded with then a value, a null value for clean underscore name and born. The indicator equals true as a column to the output data frame called underscore merge with information on the score of each row. Now we can see which CEOs were missed and notice that several of the executive names have special characters which can mangle in the text encoding. So we didn't clean our data well enough. 